Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the three to five player game, Irish Gage, designed by Tom Russell and published by Capstone Games, who helped sponsor this video. Investing in a successful train network isn't just about constructing the right connections between cities or picking up the most valuable shares. It's also about anticipating which train companies will eventually pay off and ensuring you grab them at the right price or making sure your opponents pay way too much for them. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the game board in the center of the play area and then bring your attention to this area at the top. Here you'll see five colored bars, each paired with the name of a rail company. You then find the share certificates for those companies, dividing them into piles above their matching colors. Each share will have a large value, and then you sort the cards within a stack so that they're in order from the highest number on the bottom to the lowest one on top. Above the share certificates, you then collect the matching colored train pieces. I'm going to set them inside of these plastic trays, which are not included in the game, but these will make it easier for me to move them around during the video. Each rail company also has a matching color dividend disc, which you place next to the dividends per share area here at the bottom of the board. These are the dividend cubes, and there are 10 of each of the three different dividend colors. And now you should take four of each of them and place them in the included bag and give them a good mix. Drawing blindly, you'll now randomly place one cube on each city space of the board. And these are the hexes that show a blue square at the top. When you're done, it'll look something like this. You'll have four cubes remaining in the bag, and to these you'll add all the rest of the dividend cubes. Some of the city spaces also show colored train icons. On each of these, set that matching train from the supply. These are the currency cards, which you'll set by the board as a bank, and then you give 20 British pounds to each player to start. In this video, we're going to pretend that we have three players. And that's the setup. In Irish Gage, players will be investing in train companies, building tracks, connecting cities, and collecting dividends, all in an effort to have the most money by the end of the game, making them the wealthiest rail baron. With the game set up, it now starts with some initial auctions. So let's go back to the table, and I'll show you how they work. The top share from each of the piles will be auctioned off one at a time over the course of five separate auctions. Pick a starting player randomly, and then they'll make the first bid on this share. The minimum bid they can make is the large printed value. The other values are the minimum bids for shares further down in the stack. This lets you know the values that are coming up just by looking at the tops of any of the piles. So when the starting player makes a beginning bid, it must be of a value at least as high as the large printed value on that share or higher. Of course, you can only bid an amount that you could actually pay for. That said, you don't have to make a bid at all, you can just pass. But once you pass, you may not re-enter an auction for that particular share. Then you continue around and around the table with players either bidding on the share or passing. If you choose to bid, it must always be an amount higher than the previously bid value. Also note that if the opening bidder passes, and so does everyone else, then the opening bidder gets the share for free. No matter what happens, the player who wins the share then pays their winning bid back to the bank, collecting any change as necessary, and then they put the share that they purchased face up in front of themselves. They then become the opening bidder for the next share, which in this case is the purple one. Then when that is taken, orange is next, then blue, then red. Once each of the top cards from these stacks have been taken by the players, the initial auctions are over. And now the player holding the yellow share certificate becomes the first player to take a normal turn. The game is then played over a series of turns, starting with them, and then continuing clockwise around and around the table until the game is over. And on your turn, you'll perform one of four possible actions. So let's go back to the table and I'll explain how each of them work. One option is to auction a share, and this follows the rules for the auctions we just saw, except that the current player picks any one of the top shares and is then the opening bidder, and they must bid at least the amount of its large printed value or higher. They cannot start the auction by passing, like they could during the initial opening auctions. The final winner of the share then pays their winning bid to the bank and puts the share in front of themselves. 
Instead of calling an auction, you may place railway track on your term, but you can only do this if you own at least one share of the railway you're placing. I have a yellow and a red one, so I could place either yellow or red track, which is represented by these train pieces. When taking this action, you have three build points, which you're reminded of here, and the way you can spend them is shown within this table. Now, you don't have to spend all three build points, but you must spend at least one, and any you don't spend are lost. To understand the cost to place a train, you also need to know what the different types of hexes represent. Some are easy, which is represented by this green pale shading. Others are difficult, which have a dark green shade to them. If you see blue lines shading in a hex, it's an urban area with a space for a cube. When the cube space is empty, the hex is known as a town. If it has a cube, then the hex is a city. If a city has a red outline, then it's known as a major city. This means the game always starts with five cities and three major cities. Now, when placing a new railway track, it must go into a space adjacent to one that already contains one of its colored pieces. So if I was placing this yellow track, it would have to go either in this space or any one of these. Now, because I'd like to show you some examples as I talk about this table, I'm gonna break those rules temporarily, and I'm just gonna place tracks up here separate from where they'd actually have to originate, which will always come from these cities that start with their pieces in them. So again, just to be clear, I would never be able to place a train just out on its own like this. It would need to be adjacent to a space that already contained one of its trains. To place a train in an easy or urban hex costs one of your build points. If there was already another colored train in that hex, then it costs one and a half points. I should point out any number of tracks can be in an easy or urban hex but at most they can hold only one of each color. In other words, I couldn't put another yellow train in here. Now to place a train in an empty difficult hex costs two build points, but only one railway may occupy a difficult hex, meaning the first train there will be the only train in that space for the rest of the game. If placing a train track would ever cause one of the colored railways to connect all three of the major cities of Belfast, Dublin, and Galway, a special dividend is paid to any player who owns a share of that particular railway. As you're reminded of here, that's 12 pounds, which you then divide by the number of shares currently owned in that company. For example, let's say we had one player who owned two shares of yellow, and this one owned just one. That's a total of three shares. So 12 divided by three is four. That means this player would get $4 per share for a total of eight pounds, and this player would get four pounds. Instead of calling an auction on a share or placing a railway track as their action, a player may choose to place a special interest on their turn. And this allows them to grow a town into a city. The town they choose must be connected to a railway where they own at least one share. And when I say connected to a railway, I mean a train piece must be in that space. It's not enough for the train just to come up and be adjacent to the town. Now, to complete this action, they'll pick any one cube from the bag. In other words, they don't draw randomly, they look in the bag and find the one they want. The cube is then placed on the white square of that town's hex. But note that if a player ever draws the last cube from the bag, the game will end after their turn. Placing a special interest cube doesn't give you any immediate benefit, but we'll see the value of turning a town into a city as we now learn about the final action you could instead choose to take on your turn, calling for dividends. Here, you take the bag and blindly draw three dividend cubes. If there are fewer than three cubes remaining, just take as many as there are. Now, normally, players can freely look into this bag at any point during the game. But during this action, you may not examine the contents. You now place the drawn cubes into the next available row of this area here. So we place them at the top. The colors tell us which cities will pay dividends this turn. In this case, pink and white. If there's more than one of the same color like we have here, that city still only pays out dividends once during this action. To determine the payouts, you begin at the leftmost railway company here, calculate its income, as we'll talk about in a moment, and then pay it out. Then you move to the next railway, repeat this process, and so on. 
and it's very possible that a railway may not pay out anything at all. Now just to be extra clear when determining income, remember, you only pay attention to cities that have a cube matching any of the colors shown in the row that was just created. In other words, from the cities we can see here, only these ones are paying cities and this one is not. Now to generate income, the company must connect at least one paying city, like this, to any town or connect any two paying cities. If either of these conditions are true anywhere within that company's railway, then as it says here, it will pay out two pounds per town and four pounds per city that are found anywhere along that railway. Let's just say it was later in the game and we had a yellow railway that stretched out like this. First, we need to see if this company will even be paying dividends. To do that, its tracks need to connect at least one town to a paying city, or it needs to connect two paying cities. Starting here, we do have a town that connects to a city, but the cube here doesn't match those that were drawn. Remember earlier, we drew pink and white. That means this isn't a paying city, so it doesn't count. However, if we keep going down the path here, we get to another town. Again though, connecting two towns does not cause you to pay out income. If we go a little further though, we get down here to a paying city. So that means we do have a town connected to a paying city, and that means income will be generated by this track. Income is also generated if you have at least two paying cities anywhere on the track, which we also satisfy. But either way, as soon as a track is capable of paying out, it means all paying cities and towns anywhere along its track will generate income. So it generates two pounds here for this town, as well as here and here, and then four pounds here as well as here for each of these paying cities for a total of 14 pounds. We then divide this amount by the number of shares currently held by players and round up. We'll say one player has two of them and the other has one for a total of three. 14 divided by three rounding up is five, so this player gets 10 pounds and this one gets five. After scoring one of the track colors, you then go to the next color and score it and so on. If you want any help with the calculations when you're paying out dividends, you can also use this chart here at the bottom of the board. This isn't necessary to use, it's more of an aid, and I found it easiest just to do the math as I explained in the video. But if you do want to use this, you can check the rulebook section here for how it works. Just note there is a small error that exists in at least the first printing of the game, where here it says six pounds and it should say five. So those are the four possible actions you can take on a turn. Either auction one of the shares at the top of the board, place railway, place a special interest, or make a call for dividends. And players will take turns completing one of those actions until no cubes remain in the dividend bag. At the end of the turn, on which this was emptied, the game is over. All players now add the cash in their hands to the large printed value on the shares that they own, and the player with the highest value wins. In the case of a tie, the tied players share the victory. As the game is played and you're investing in companies, you'll want to see the tracks for those companies expand outward so that when dividends are paid, those companies become more profitable. But the catch, of course, is that other players won't want you to have all those profits for yourself. And they're gonna invest in those companies as well. So then do you wanna see that company succeed as much as you did before? Should you buy more shares? How much should you pay? How much shouldn't you pay? Those are the kind of decisions that you'll have to make while playing. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Irish Gage. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.